Shalom and welcome back to the Rashi Nash. I'm Pastor Matt. And I'm Kira. And as always, well, maybe not always, but as per usual, but recently we have Millie with us. Uh, here in Florida, it's storming pretty hard outside and Millie gets a little afraid of the thunder. So she's, she's with us today. So thank you for uh, joining us with Millie. So this week we have Parshat Shoftim, which means judges. And there are lots of things in here about appointing judges, cities of refuge, um, not accepting a bribe if you're a judge, but there's something that really meant a lot to me that I wanted to bring up with you. And that is, it says, you shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God an ox or a sheep that has in it a blemish or any bad thing, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. So first I just wanna talk briefly about offering the Lord our best, about not giving God something that is less than, something that um, is not the best. We really need to be, if we're doing it, as the Bible says, as unto the Lord, then we need to be really putting forth our best effort. And I was thinking particularly with how you organize the things at our church with the children, with the, the people that do our kids church program and our vacation Bible school in the summer, where we put a lot of effort into doing things right because our children are so important and getting them the right messages about the Lord, about the Bible, um, getting them involved in, in music that is worship. We spend a lot of energy doing our, our very, very best. And I just wanted to see if you had something that you wanted to, to talk about that, about because I know that's just who you are, is that you want to, to do the, the very best. And one of the things that that does for us, I know, is when we're scheduling volunteers to work with little children, if somebody isn't gifted with kids or maybe doesn't have the patience to work with kids, um, kids today are a little different. Yes, they are. And you and I, in one way or another, have been involved in children's and or youth ministry for, well, really, let's be honest, for decades now. And uh, I was a, a summer missionary with a Christian organization when I was even in high school and in college where we reached out to, to children and uh, tried to reach them with the gospel. But there's something to be said about this particular generation and it takes a specific amount of care and, and patience and and let's be honest um strategy yeah. because there's a lot of vying for our kids attention they they are on devices now that weren't around when we were kids and they're on these devices all the time and some parents have different views on whether they limit screen time or not. And so some kids are a little overstimulated. And so it's difficult for us to get them to sit still and to listen to a Bible lesson. Yeah, you definitely have to put some thought into it because, you know, back in the day, you, didn't, you could just do something kind of simple and, you know, whatever. But now you've got to really not only be intentional about letting them get up and letting them move and then sit down and then move again but you've also got to maybe use some stuff that's on a screen versus some stuff that you're just verbalizing versus things you can hold that are tangible so you can really meet everybody's um you know level to learning style you know what i mean so it really does take a lot of thought and effort and research so you even try to hit different kids and different types of kids where they are as far as how they learn and what will most reach them yeah and luckily there's a lot of good curriculums out there but you just have to really take the time to research and find them but and it's not something that you can just uh the morning of you just show up and you open your little book and you do whatever there's you work quite a bit ahead in coordinating volunteers and making sure they have their material in advance so that they know it and there's a lot of that, right? A lot of planning. Yeah, it takes a little, takes some effort for sure. So that to me, for some reason, that's immediately where my mind went about um, offering the Lord and offering without a blemish. It, it was like not phoning it in, in, in ministry. But the other thing that I think it really stuck out to me is that what, what Rashi says, if you look in the Hebrew, when it says you shall not sacrifice an ox or a sheep that has in it a blemish 
or any bad thing. Bad thing. That's, that's an interesting phrase. Here's what's interesting. If we look at the Hebrew, it doesn't say bad thing. It says davar ra. A davar is a, a word. It's something you speak. And the word ra is evil. So it, something that doesn't have an evil word associated with it. And that was very interesting to me. And what Rashi says is, this is an admonition to one who would make sacrifices disqualified through an evil utterance. And then I thought, how do you make a sacrifice invalid because of an evil utterance? And then I thought about the New Testament, where Yeshua says, leave your offering, go be reconciled to your brother, and then come back and offer it. How many times are we completely oblivious to the fact, oh Lord, I'm doing this for you, and then we are speaking ill of someone. It would almost be like all of the work that you put into the lesson for the children, all of the work that you put into that. But you're not following it yourself. Not following it yourself. Or what if you get impatient with one of the volunteers and you, you speak to them in a, in a mean way or, or one of the children I, at least from what Rashi is saying here, I think we could take from that that it's almost like you're making that offering that you're giving to the Lord. Here, Lord, I'm offering my time and my service to these children to try to teach them the word of God. But because I was short with the volunteer or because I got frustrated with one of the kid's parents or whatever, I'm just for some reason thinking about our children's ministry right now. And to me, what Rashi is saying is, our behavior can disqualify our offering to the Lord, especially with our speech. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. We, we know that. And maybe this is why I'm, I'm thinking of the kids. Because then what if that evil utterance, what if that affects the kids as well? What if you lose your temper with one of the volunteers in front of the children. Um, at least what it says in the New Testament is that if we if we lead one of these little ones astray, it, it would be better for us to have a giant stone tied around our neck and for us to be thrown into the ocean. What a, what a terrible thought. And a lot of times if you, or if the kid is upset, then the kid doesn't want to come back. And a lot of times right. if the kid doesn't want to come, then the parents don't want to come and then you lose all of them sometimes. Right. Wow. So an interesting take on not offering to the Lord an animal that has a, has a blemish on it. Um, one more thing. There's a, another commentary that sort of elucidates Rashi. And it says that the blemish can even be a temporary blemish. That an offering can be disqualified if the blemish is temporary even more so that takes me for whatever reason this week to ministry, to ministry that we do, uh, especially, like I said, I'm thinking of, of, of your ministry to children and our particular church, that temporary blemish, the, a, a harsh word that is given, it, it takes hardly any time but sometimes lifetime damage can be done from, from a temporary thing. We need to be so careful about the quality of offering that we make to the Lord. If we're doing it for God, we don't want to phone it in. If we're doing it for God, we want to put our maximum effort into it. If we're doing it for God, we want to do it well. Um, both of us are involved in music in various ways. You help lead worship on Sunday mornings. There's that wonderful verse in the Psalms where David says to play skillfully for the Lord. I love it that our worship team rehearses. It, it's important that what we're offering to the Lord is not just we get there five minutes before the service starts and whatever we feel like we're just going to do. It, it's got to be done in excellence. Yeah. The things that we offer to the Lord have got to be done in excellence. 
And because there's no temple and there's no offerings being offered, we have to look at this in a spiritual way. And, and so we have to say, Lord, what is it that I'm offering you? And does it have a blemish, even if it's a temporary one? Or am I disqualifying this offering because of an evil word that I say? Or even having a bad attitude while you're giving the offering itself. Or a bad attitude while giving. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how many how many times have we tried Just to minister? Doing this I have to. Yeah. <laughs> I many, should. How many times <laughs> through gritted teeth are we telling people what they need to be doing? Anyway. Um, something for us to think about something for us to be challenged about so this week as you make whatever offering to the lord that you make whatever it is that you are bringing to god make sure that you're doing it to the best of your ability that you're not having an offering with a blemish and that you're not disqualifying your offering because of your attitude let's do it with full what we call in in hebrew with with kavana with the, the the truest intention of our hearts the right motive and let's remember the words of yeshua that if if we do have something going on with a brother or sister if they've got something against us if there's something that needs to be resolved leave the offering go be reconciled and then come back and and offer it Let's get those things out of the way. Let's not have anything standing in our way. This, I think, is a, a wonderful lesson uh, for us in the modern world, even though the black and white of the Torah talk about offering an ox or a sheep that has a blemish. This is the beauty of the Torah. We can make a spiritual application in this way. So thank you for joining us this week. Check your attitude as you offer what you do for the Lord and make sure you're doing it for the right motives. Thank you so much for joining us again this week and Millie, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Shalom and Kultuv. Cool